broadcasting live from our studio in Boston. Solutions Review is proud to showcase Infragistics in the Solution Spotlight, a unique online event for industry professionals. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review and welcome to the Solution Spotlight featuring Infragistics and focused on how to accelerate digital transformation with low code and embedded BI. A recent KPMG US technology survey revealed a majority of digital transformations are off track and not yielding desired results. The primary recommended fix depends on both developing people and deploying technology. More specifically, there's a need to connect tech investments to business strategy, customer experience, and innovation. So we are very happy today to offer you a demonstration of how Infragistics is bringing together two of the key technologies for getting digital transformation back on track, low-code app development and embedded BI. And to walk us through the presentation today is Jason Barris, Senior Vice President of Developer Tools at Infragistics. Jason, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Doug. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, always happy to see you. Uh, in the intro, I mentioned that um, one of the recommendations uh, from KPMG was to connect tech investments to business strategy, customer experience, and innovation. I mean, you're the senior developer of tools. You've been at Infragistics for a while, certainly helping a lot of folks puzzle through this. Where are you finding that they're getting it wrong with regard to the tools that they're bringing in or the technology that they're bringing in for digital transformation? Yeah, it's a good question. I think the the issue is there's still organizations thinking that they can compete and beat the competition by still building things themselves. And those days are long gone. You know, with the emergence of a SaaS tool for everything, embedded SDKs for almost everything, developer tooling for almost everything, the ability for an organization, for an IT organization to keep up with competition, to digitally transform, to innovate, they no longer can build everything themselves. They have to use tools. They have to use low code tools. They have to use embedded tools like BI. I still run into customers, which blows my mind that believe they can build embedded BI solutions with self-service and all of the capabilities that they could get from an SDK from a vendor uh, themselves for less money. It will never be less money. The time to market and the amount of effort organizations need to make to deliver production quality software is years. And you just can't beat using tooling uh, to accelerate that. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It, that's complex, right? There's uh, there's some cultural issues there. There's a little hubris uh, <laughs> underneath. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot going on there. Um, so, so I'm glad you're here because I know a lot about Infragistics. Actually, we ha I had a separate conversation. Um, oh, yeah, that's with, right. Yeah, with Dean. With Dean, our CEO, yep. Yep, uh, on another event, and uh, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating topic, so I want to let you get after it. So let me just cool. set everybody's expectations. Um, we're going to let Jason go and make present his presentation, just a little bit of a slide deck, I think, and then, and then on to yep. a demonstration. And then I'm going to take any questions that you might have. I'll hold them here. I'm going to have a few of my own, for sure. Great. Uh, and we'll come back at the end of Jason's presentation with a with a Q and A uh, to wrap the event up. So, Jason, I'm going to hand it over to you. The floor is yours, yeah. uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Doug. So today we're going to talk about accelerating app delivery with low code and embedded BI. And again, my name is Jason Barris. I'm a senior VP here at Infragistics. I've been with the company for over 20 years now, and uh, my goal is really to understand what you, the customer needs, and where the market is going to ensure that we deliver solutions that are available when you need them. So today, um, you know, when we look at how we've come far <laughs> over the years, we were uh, founded in 1989 at Infragistics. Uh, of course, we're a partner with all of the big tech firms like Apple, Google, Microsoft, et cetera. But the real story behind this is that we have customers in every vertical, in every industry, in every country in the world. Uh, so being in the software business for over, well over 30 years, uh, we've had the opportunity to learn and understand 
uh, what drives uh, organizations to compete uh, and to win in the market. Uh, and that's our goal is to deliver those solutions to you uh, that enable winning and beating your customers and beating the competition and giving you that edge uh, that you need to stay ahead. And this is a, a little timeline that kind of talks to some of the capabilities that we've built over the years. But if you look over to the right, uh, two products we're going to talk about today. Reveal was shipped in 2019. So it's about five years old now. Uh, and App Builder was shipped in 2021. So we're going into our fourth year here, third year of App Builder. And this product has made a huge uh, leap in capability over the last uh, 12 to 18 months and how we can really enable development teams to drive productivity you know, eliminate that backlog and accelerate delivery of product. And then, of course, Reveal being an embedded SDK for self-service BI is pretty amazing. And that's going to come through today. We're going to spend most of our time on how Reveal can really change how you deliver experiences to your customers. We have locations all over the world. Our headquarters is in Cranberry, New Jersey. I am in Michigan. Uh, we have offices in London, Tokyo, Bulgaria, Uruguay, India, and then folks spread out in different places all over the place. Uh, now that the world has gone remote, uh, you know, we have folks in uh, New Zealand, in Korea, uh, in Boise, Idaho, uh, you name it. There's going to be an Infragistics uh, support team wherever you are at or wherever uh, you, your coworkers are at. Wherever you need help, we're going to have not only technical people, but sales and marketing in locations uh, geographically located to ensure that we can help you when you need it. So today's product focus is Reveal, which is our uh, self-service uh, embedded BI SDK, and then App Builder, which is a low code tool. Sort of different needs in the market. You know, you might think, well, wait a minute, if I need a self-service BI, why does low code matter? Well, what I'm gonna demonstrate today is how you can use tooling to accelerate the overall digital transformation needs that your company might have. So while you do need to deliver better dashboards, better ability for your users to understand data faster, to drive a data-driven culture with something like Reveal, how your development team accelerates that delivery also matters. And with App Builder, it's not just about Reveal. This is a general purpose low-code tool. Uh, and the beauty of it, as you'll see, is it generates real production ready code that you can edit and have full control over the experience that you're giving your users. So with Reveal, the goal is to accelerate insights with a self-service embedded analytics SDK. The most important thing to take away from this conversation today is that Reveal is not a SaaS product. It is an embeddable SDK. You take the libraries and you put them in your application. So for example, if you're a .NET Core backend and an Angular front end, on the .NET Core app, you would install a NuGet package that has all of the capabilities of your embedded BI server. If you have your Angular app on the client, you add a JavaScript library or our NPM package for Angular to light up all of the client capabilities. So the idea of an embedded SDK versus a SaaS product is pretty different because in a SaaS product, you're probably using some backend hosted service, you're embedding some sort of an iframe in your client app, and you're really kind of getting a bolted on type experience with an embedded library. It's a built-in experience, complete control over what you deliver. And since it is self-service, you can deliver read-only dashboards. You can deliver dashboards that are editable. Users can go into an edit mode and change things, um, or they can create new dashboards. So all of that is up to you. And what I'm going to show you today is a few different examples of how it might look embedded in your application versus you know, what you might be thinking. Well, if I have a SaaS app and I have to jump to another page or another site uh, to view a dashboard, no, that's not the case with Reveal. And of course, because it's an SDK, you have an API over the entire experience. And I mentioned our JavaScript library and our Angular or .NET Core backend. We also have a Java backend. We have a Node.js backend. So based on what your application framework or stack looks like, we'll meet you there with the right solution uh, so it fits into your tech stack. So Reveal 
again, not a not a SaaS. It's an SDK. You are embedding this into your application, which is really a nice sweet spot for us in the market because the market's really overrun by hosted SaaS products that will give you an iframe experience, which usually isn't desirable. It's doing a simple page resize breaks everything. Um, so having embedded is is quite nice. There's no per user or per server fee. So with Reveal, you're paying one price for unlimited users, unlimited servers. Compare that to something like a Power BI where you're on a user-based uh, fee schedule along with a cloud uh, consumption fee schedule. So your prices very quickly get to $60,000, $80,000, $100,000 a year, uh, which you, you can't uh, predict what your payments are going to be. With Reveal, we grow with you. So you know, if you have five customers today, it's one price. If you have 5,000 in six months or next year, it's the same exact price. We're not going to charge you more. We do a direct connect model for data sources. So for example, if you have Snowflake as your data source, we have a Snowflake data connector. If you're using SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, uh, you name it, it is a, you're using our data connector and you're connecting directly to your database. You're executing queries that you have control over with row level security, filtering, et cetera. And that data is brought back down to the dashboard in an aggregated fashion. And of course, because we are an SDK, you deploy anywhere. It's just like your app. It's actually in your app, right? There's no special separate thing. The cool thing though, is let's say you have a Python backend. Uh, we don't have a Python backend. You can have a Node backend or a .NET Core or a Java backend next to your Python backend and still deliver Reveal with the same authentication authorization that you would use in your Python server, but although you're just passing that back and forth on the server side. So there's really no limit to how this could work in your tech stack. And because we are living inside of your tech stack, we're not going out to our cloud, our servers, everything is, is literally on your server. In fact, uh, one of the nice things is we have a lot of customers that have legacy products that are deployed to, um, let's say, oil rigs that don't have internet connectivity. They're uh, deployed to uh, you know field locations out in the desert where there's no uh, connectivity. They're still getting those analytics when they need it based on the fact that it's running on a local server with the data that they need right there. So uh, we're living within the context of your experience. And of course, again, you have an API on the client and the server to ensure that you're really giving a great experience to your users. So then let's talk about low code. So App Builder, which today we're gonna kind of use App Builder to build out a little bit of a reveal app, and then we're gonna go modify it, or you're gonna see a modified version of it uh, running. Uh, low code is taking over the world. So Gartner, Forrester, even you know Solutions Review two, three years ago, we're talking about getting ready for low code because low code is coming, like it or not. So you're a developer today and you're thinking, well, we're never gonna use low code tools because we can write better code. Well, that might be true, but are you writing code that's 2% better, 5% better? Probably, maybe, but you're gonna get 80% productivity gains just using tooling. And that's this real cultural shift that Doug mentioned in the intro. It is more cultural than anything else to get onto using tooling to build out your app scenarios. And that's where App Builder comes in. What we did is we took a different approach um, than most where it was like low code, but really no code, right? So you're building out your app in some WYSIWYG, but you really don't get any code to go modify. While our entire value prop is that you get production ready, pixel perfect, excellent generated code from anything that you design. Uh, so let's say you build out an, a screen experience and it has data entry uh, and you're doing CRUD back to an open API SQL server. You know, we generate all that code for you. And when you look at that code and you compare it to the code that you might be building yourself, it's probably pretty darn close. So where we've spent a ton of time is not only on an amazing designer experience, but ensuring that the code that gets generated is of the highest quality that then you could say, yep, I can use this tool. It really accelerates 
the design of my applications. And then when I generate that code, I can continue working with that code uh, to improve it at our own domain expertise, solution, et cetera. Uh, and you have a really good outcome. So my slide, actually, I failed to update the coming soon there on the bottom for the Figma logo. Another really cool feature of App Builder is that you can import your Figma uh, designs and we'll generate those screens for you. So we have a whole design system that your designers can use in Figma or Sketch uh, or X, Adobe XD. If you're still on that, you can use it, but I think that's kind of going away soon uh, to something different. But you can design an entire app experience and import that into App Builder. So we're bringing together what a design team does and what a dev team does so you can stay in your favorite tooling you're using Figma, going into App Builder, designers or developers are using App Builder, you're generating code up to GitHub, and then you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code to finish off or continue to work on that code experience. The neat thing is we do generate React, Blazor, and Angular code, but we also generate web components code. So if you're looking at future-proofing your apps, you know, thinking about web components that they are... Uh, just part of a, a browser render. You're not tied into a specific framework. Uh, we also support web components. So we basically cover all of the major platforms that developers are using today to build out apps. So let's get into a demo now and take a look at uh, App Builder, how you can use App Builder to really build out better app experiences. Uh, and then we'll carry that over to some reveal experiences and then how reveal as a self-service embedded BI tool can really help your organizations. The way that you would get to App Builder is you would simply go to appbuilder.dev. So here is, uh, I've already logged into App Builder, but I'm gonna go over to appbuilder.dev. This is our website, which kind of talks to the value prop of what you get with App Builder, but you'll see that the key message we have is to maximize efficiency and minimize costs. And you'll when you go to the website, you'll see a bunch of nice uh, experiences that you can build with App Builder. But we also talk to the different folks on your digital fusion teams that really care about building applications. And again, if we go back to some of the stuff Gartner and Forrester are talking about, by 2025, 70% of enterprise apps will start with low-code tools. So this culture shift, if, it's, if it hasn't happened in your organization, it needs to happen um, sooner than later. But once you go to appbuilder.dev, uh, you have Try App Builder for free. We have a nice, friendly, uh, free trial, or you can just sign in. So I've already signed in, or I was signed in. So we'll jump right over to uh, where I was previously. And this is sort of your entry point into App Builder. So on the left-hand side, I have a bunch of different workspaces. Obviously, I'm using App Builder all the time, every day to build out demos and samples. But when you log in for the first time, your workbench area will look like this. So you have a few options. You can build a new application. You can import designs. You can start with one of our pre-built sample applications. The idea with these apps is we've designed them beautifully. We've made them look great. Just add your own data. And this might be an app that you have been thinking about building um, for your own organization. But if I click on new application, I just want to highlight some of the nice features that as a developer or a designer, um, you know, are attractive. So we start out with a bunch of built in, built in templates. These are empty templates. So for example, if I go to sample apps, these are full scale apps that have a bunch of screens and it's they're very highly polished in design. A template is just a common navigation UI pattern um, that you usually would start with in an application. And then over on import designs, this is where you could drag and drop uh, your Figma files, your XD files. We also have plugins for all of these. So you could have a sketch plugin that lets you dump right into App Builder or Figma. You're just in Figma. You synchronize with App Builder and boom, it's all there. So I'm going to start just really quick with a, uh, a default empty template, a header plus nav plus content. And I'm going to give you a, a quick tour of what you can do here with um, App Builder. 
So this is going to generate uh, a basic default application. On the left-hand side, I have my different views. You can see there's some sample text in the views here on the first view and then view one or view two and view three. I don't have anything, but of course I can then go in here and pick out what a layout might look like on this particular screen. So I'm going to click done. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to show you what the left-hand menu has. On the left uh, first menu is our toolbox. So the toolbox is populated with all of the UI controls from our Ignite UI product. Ignite UI is an enterprise enterprise grade set of UI components. Remember in Fragistics, we've been in business for 30 years building the fastest grids, the fastest charts, the most robust UI components used by every finance company, bank, you name it in the world. We had 400 out of the 500 uh, Fortune 100 using all of our Fortune 500 using our product. Um, but all of these controls are highly extensible, highly customizable, but also optimized for performance. We have data, so you can link in any data sources that you might have. Uh, there's a variable, so if you want to pass variables between pages, routed parameters, et cetera, it's a key part of app building, of course. Uh, then you have theming and branding, so we provide some built-in themes, but at the same time, you can duplicate and edit themes to be whatever custom branding you'd like. Start with the base template, light or dark, and then go from there. Uh, and then finally, you can have different image assets with your application. But let's go back to our master view. And I'm just gonna hit the run button in the upper right. And I wanna highlight what's happening here. So what you'll see is I click the menu on the left that my pages are changing. So this is the actual running app. And over on the right-hand side is the code for this app. So remember, I said we generate code, uh, production-ready, editable code. That's our secret sauce. But it's not just Angular. Standalone components or modules, Blazor, WebAssembly, or server, web components. So if I jump over to say Blazor WebAssembly code, you're actually going to get Blazor code for the same thing. Uh, so this is just a preview window. Ultimately, what you end up doing is choosing what type of code that you want to generate, and then you're publishing it or you're downloading a zip package for it. So in this case, let's say I want to build out some you know, typical app experience. I can pick a layout here. I'll do something like up and down. I can resize these areas. So now I, I basically have a, uh, a layout on my screen. I'll do a control E, which is a shortcut for bringing up my toolbox. And I can just search really quickly in here for something that I might want. So let's add a grid here uh, to the bottom. And maybe up here, if I wanted, I could add something like a combo box. And I could do something where I might select an item from the combo box, and then it would reflect in the grid. So for the grid experience, most people, they care deeply about grids, and they care what their grids can do. Uh, you can add features to your grids. Of course, Infragistics is known for unbelievable grid features. So on the right-hand side where I have all my properties, I'll go ahead and just start adding some different features. So I'm simply just selecting items and you'll notice that the grid is reflecting those changes as I make them. So here, if we do cell editing, maybe Outlook group by, pinning, moving, resizing, et cetera, I have all of these features now that were enabled on my grid. You can see I have paging enabled, uh, 10 rows per page. Maybe we'll change this to 20. And so you just select any one of these links and then you're getting properties uh, per those values. Now, if I click run, what you're gonna see is here's my grid running. And now you'll notice that my generated code was updated too. So this is Blazor code. So our Blazor grid is called the IGB grid. Uh, it's going to be bound to some data. It has the primary key information. And of course, it will generate the service that's calling uh, the data for this. This is a, a web API up in the cloud, and it's going to go and get those the employees for this table. But I have all of the interactivity and all of the stuff that you would expect from this grid. Now, let's say, for example, you were uh, building out something a little bit more branded. Maybe we looked at some of the themes earlier. If I change this to a material dark theme, then it'll change to material dark. If I change it to a fluent dark, now we have a fluent dark. But you'll notice that with fluent, 
things like my buttons have squared edges where material they were rounded. Now, if I look at the uh, bootstrap dark, again, it's a little bit different um, looking theme, some different colors, but all of this flows through into the entire application. Let's say you don't like the dark view, no problem. You wanna do a variant on the dark, you can duplicate this and then you're right into uh, a different type of view. So in this case, if I wanna change this to like more of a, a hot pink is my primary color, I can save that, it's gonna update. Now I have like a material hot pink with a bootstrap type style and there we go, it's a beautiful application. And then once I'm ready to get this thing moving, I can just publish this to GitHub, Blazor, Angular, React, Web Components, doesn't matter, and I'm ready to go. Now for today, what I did, because I wanted to highlight uh, Reveal and what you can do with Reveal, I started to build an application in my Solutions Review workspace, and I built a Solutions Review demo. So let's go ahead and edit this low code solution in the app builder. I'll go back up to my pages on the left hand side. You can see I have a handful of pages here. And what I wanted to do with this sample was kind of highlight some different features and capabilities uh, of what you could do in app builder. But then also once I generated the code, I made some modifications to make it even better. But in this case, you'll notice I have uh, my solutions review logo in the upper left. If you've ever been to the solutions review uh, homepage, you know this is what it looks like on the left hand or the yeah the left hand uh, navigation. I've got sort of the person who's logged in, and then some different links on what the different pages are in my application. So if I select my home page, what I have here is actually a reveal dashboard. So inside of App Builder, if I jump over to the toolbox and I do a search for Reveal, we actually have embedded Reveal into App Builder so you can use this in a WYSIWYG drag and drop experience. Now the right hand side here of course has different properties that uh, you, know, you set on a per component. So something for Reveal, you saw what it looked like for the grid, these are gonna be different. But you'll notice here that a key, key aspect of Reveal is what is my server, where is it located, what dashboard do I wanna load in, and then there's some different properties that you can set on visualizations um, and generally speaking. So in this case, I hid the menu and the header. So if I show the header, you'll see the header there. And if I show the menu, there'll be an overflow for the menu once we run this. But I want to hide those aspects of it. Over here on the right hand side, we have a list view. I bound that list view to a web API. So I have a, a local service actually running, um, which is also has to be deployed to the cloud. I was just running it locally for the purposes of today, but it has a web API called dashboards and dashboards ex ex expects a mode. And that mode uh, for one will allow me to uh, get uh, the, the data that I actually want. So in this case, I wanna get all of the dashboards that I have up on my server. So there's a web API call for that. We look at our dashboards page. It's a little bit different. Again, it has a list view. It's calling the dashboards API, and then it's going to, um, I, I added a reveal uh, screen here. So if I was to create this screen from scratch, what I would do is I would simply add a new child view. So here's my child view. I'll leave the name right where it's at. I'm going to pick a representative layout. So let's do a left right hand layout here. I'm going to push this over to the side to make it a little bit smaller. You'll notice when I do that, the width changes here. So I might want to change this to something like 25%, right? So you can customize how that might actually work. I'm going to do a control E again, and I'm going to grab a list view. So now you'll see that I have an empty list view. How can I get something into that list? Well, I'm gonna tell it to use uh, data. What data do I wanna use? Well, I've already linked up my reveal server. These are APIs that are available to me on my server. I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. We're not gonna go too much today in how the server gets set up, um, but these APIs I added and they're available to me. So I wanna get my dashboards from here. And like we saw earlier, the dashboards on my API based on how much data I wanna bring back. I have these modes 
Um, so mode one means bring back the name, uh, some metadata with it. We'll actually see it right here when we start setting properties. So what I want to do now is bind some of those properties from my dashboards endpoint to my list. I want to bind the title uh, as my title. For the subtitle, you can see the other fields that are available here. I've got like dashboard title, date created. I've generated some fake owners, you know, so like who actually added this dashboard. Um, so now you can see there's my list. And for this image, I am going to bind it as well to one of the fields here. And this field is my fake dashboard image URL. And I'm going to show you a little bit later why it's a fake image URL and not a real image URL. All right. So there, if I run this now, actually, I'm going to set one more property. On my column layout, you've got some properties here on the lower right when you select a column layout. I want the overflow to be auto. What that means is if there's more items that will fit in that space for my list, it'll just add a scroll bar. So let's go ahead and hit run. And there we go. You can see I've got my uh, list of different dashboards that are generated from the server. Looks great. Let's go back into, in fact, let's go look at what this might look like in Angular, in an Angular standalone. So just so you can see that there's no smoke and mirrors here, we're using the IG list, IGX list component. This is part of our Ignite UI for Angular product. There's a service that's calling or it's setting an array, reveal server file data. And these are the fields that we're actually binding to. So we are doing real data binding here. Um, on ng on a knit, we're actually calling a method that's in a service. We don't show the services here, but they get generated in the code. This is using standalone Angular components. So this is all legitimate, high quality production code. So let's go back to edit mode. On my list, um, I'm going to get rid of my action. So that little star went away. Now over on the right hand side, I want to add in a reveal component. So let's go back here. Let's search for reveal. Let's just drag this right in. Boom, there's my reveal component. So my reveal component by default, we have a server up in the cloud uh, that will, uh, it's always available. You can use it for you know read-only stuff, but I'm gonna bind this to a property that I already have set, which is my local, my local server. And then what I wanna do is when the application, or when this page loads, I want a dashboard to be listed here. So. I'm gonna just type in banking because I can see banking is in my list. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is when someone selects this guy, I want to update this property that we're, we're gonna bind to this list. So you can see I kind of have a hard-coded default here. So when I run this, it looks great. But when I click these, I actually want this to get updated. So it's a simple property inside of um, app builder. So let's go here on my interactions. I am going to uh, set a variable. So when I set the variable, I'm going to do a new variable and we'll call this the um, dashboard name like so. So I want to set the dashboard name and the value of that is going to be the dashboard file name that gets selected. So now I've kind of created this variable. It's called dashboard name. What am I going to do with dashboard name? Well, here I want to change banking to dashboard name. So when I run this for the first time, nothing's going to show up. Now, of course, we also have another feature called a routed parameter. So you can make it show up by default. We're just not going to go too heavy into that today. But now when I run this guy, you can see when I select my dashboard on the left hand side, the right hand side is reflecting the correct dashboard. So let's get rid of our code view here. So this is actually real live running code. Uh, underneath the hood, we're running uh, an actual uh, Angular application. I mean, this is your app. This is the Pixel Perfect app. And even here, I've got my overflow. If I jump into edit mode, now I'm in the edit mode for this particular um, visualization. If I select it and I jump into edit mode, I'm in the WYSIWYG. I can drag and drop. I can change things. Let's do deposits goal by country. And just like that, I've got my deposits goal by country, which is pretty slick. 
Uh, and in fact, let's see if we can do something cool. I didn't try this, but you know, what the heck? Uh, live demo. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we won't do that. <laughs> I didn't try it, so we're not going to attempt it. But this is all built into the client. Like, you don't have to write any code, and you actually have a WYSIWYG drag and drop self service BI experience. And I didn't write any code yet. There's been zero code. All of this is point and click inside of App Builder. So, what I did is I went ahead and I generated this code. So, I published it to GitHub. Up in GitHub, I have a solutions review um, application. And then I brought it down. Let me grab my solutions review. Uh, that's ng-conf trader. That's the portal. Well, anyway, I don't have the solutions review one open at the moment. I thought I did. Um, but what I ended up doing was then generating the code and doing a little bit more to it. So I added a little bit of flair to um, some of the screens. There's another feature in Reveal which allows you to uh, get different thumbnails of the dashboards as they're coming down instead of my fake thumbnail. But this is an Angular application. This is exactly the code that gets generated. So this is legit Angular code, uh, a little bit of addition on my part, but we generate this in App Builder. So it's not this black box spaghetti code that you would normally have to worry about in a situation where um, you're using a low code tool. So after I did all that work, this is my solutions review application. So if we go back here and I jump over to my home view, I had my menu across the top. These are just cards, kind of like nice sample data. This is a real dashboard. This is my real list of uh, visualizations. And when I generate the code and I added, I think a couple of uh, things around styling, but I also added my uh, custom code for uh, my real uh, thumbnails. This is what my home screen looks like. So I actually have a real live interactive dashboard. Now, remember, I removed the menu and the header because I didn't want that for my home screen. The home screen is kind of like a, a quick snapshot of all of the stuff, all of the analytics that we might be tracking um, inside of my organization. Now, if I select this button, I jump right into one of the dashboards off the home screen. So this is a, a full uh, reveal dashboard. This is the embedded part. So when we talk about embedding and I think about my entire app experience, I'm over at Solutions Review. We're building out the application for Solutions Review Analytics. The left-hand side, app code. The top part, app code. If I go to the home, this is all my application code, this right-hand side, all my application code. Your embedded SDK is right here where the charts are. If I go to my dashboards, this list, this is app code, this is my embedded SDK. So when we talk about this truly built-in experience, I mean, Solutions Review, their primary logo color is red with white text. So what I did is I said, use the accent color of red in reveal when you generate this use a specific font for solutions review when you generate this so this looks like a real embedded experience that you would build this list here these are my sales people this is just my application code it'd be like anything else um, in a real uh, line of business application that you probably built 50 of you have a tabbed ui on the right hand side you might have a data grid this is just the Angular data grid from Infragistics, but on my first tab is a reveal dashboard. And what I'm doing is based on the particular user that I'm selecting, I'm dynamically populating their data in this dashboard. So that's the other thing. You have complete control over that data experience. Now, if we look at some of the features that you get with reveal, you'll notice as I hover over individual elements in these charts, the tooltip is giving me different options based on what I'm hovering over. So for example, and this deposits versus goal visualization, I can drill up or drill down to a particular uh, date range. This is all automatic. You don't have to write code to do anything. We'll actually look at the hierarchy of dates that you bind to a visualization and we'll generate drills up and drill down automatically. We also automatically add filters. So in this case, I want to filter by 2020 Q4 
And now all of the other visualizations change and it's showing me the Q4 data um, that or that October 2020 to January 1st, 2021. So we see a little bit of data here for both um, all those quarters. So I click the X and I'm backed out of that. If I go to a pre-built filter, like my country, I can select a few of these guys, click apply. And now I just have Afghanistan, Albania, and Argentina. And you can see that those are selected here in my map. Now, if I go back and I select all, click apply, I'm good to go. If I jump over to my customers list, you know, a lot of customers just want to see data in a grid. They don't want to do anything like a, a bar chart or a line chart. So of course you can do that. But one of the neat features in Reveal is you can link the context of data to another dashboard or even to another screen in your app. So I'm going to say open order details for Ocean, and I passed in that customer ID to this other dashboard, and it's just showing information for that customer ID, which again, is just a common thing that you would do um, in any type of application. And as I scroll through, you can see the different visualizations and styles of visualizations and how things look. Let's say, for example, you're looking at inventory management and you want to change this to a different type of visualization. Simply just go into edit mode. Now I'm in edit mode. Let me go to the overflow. I'm right back into the editor for this visualization. I can collapse this list to give me a little bit more room. And maybe I want to change this from a combo chart, uh, maybe to a stacked column that might not work. Um, funnel chart definitely doesn't work. What we probably realize is that that uh, stacked chart probably worked or the combo chart probably worked best. But the idea here is that you have all types of different visualizations that you can use um, for every common business scenario. So it makes it super easy to do that. And then let's say, for example, I did leave it at this terrible uh, example of trying to visualize data. I check the box. It's right there. Maybe I want to resize this a bit. I can change the way this visualization looks. Basically, you have complete control in edit mode. But the nice thing is, let's say user who's not allowed to edit is logged in. Simply hide the edit button. You have a can edit equals false property, and then you're done. So the nice thing is, again, we're an API. You have control over every aspect of what displays in every menu. And in fact, these buttons here are just custom menu items that I added. We don't have the ability to schedule an email, but you could easily add a dialogue and do a scheduler on the server, use our server-side export, and then email a dashboard. So in this case, beautiful, I can do that. Um, so while we're here, actually, let's go to a, a different visualization. Let me pick one that might have some different chart types here. Yeah, this has a few interesting chart types. I'm going to click the overflow and let's take a look at an export. So if I do an export to Excel, what we do here is we give you the ability to select and deselect different items that you may not want to export. Maybe I don't want to export product shipments and customer. I'll just click export to Excel. The nice thing that we do here is we give you a tab which shows you what was filtered. So this was filtered for customer ID quick. So you know what you're looking at. Now each tab is going to be one of the visualizations in that dashboard. Where we can, we also render a native Excel chart as well. So you can see here, this is not a screenshot, it's a native chart. So we'll do that for you. You can disable this if you want, but it does give the user a little bit of continuation of the experience that they had in the dashboard uh, also in the export. And if you do something like an export to PDF, it looks a little bit different. Um, you have a little bit um, more capabilities with it is what I'll say. So what it's doing now is it's grabbing a screenshot of each one of the visualizations. So you can see here, I've got all my visualizations. I've got my charts. Let's say, for example, here, I wanted to annotate this and, you know, draw an arrow. I can add some text, you know, great work like so, and check the box. And now that will come out with my export as well. So now you export this to PDF. You have a pixel perfect PDF view of that, including my annotation. But we also might run into the situation where, yeah, your power users, they're comfortable with editing. They're comfortable with doing new dashboards. 
but maybe I'm not comfortable because I'm not familiar with the data. There's another feature we have using a library we call the document object model, which lets you parse through all of the dashboards that you've created on your server. And we allow you to create new dashboards based on those existing dashboards. So a lot of users might like most of a dashboard or most of three dashboards, but they want to create their own dashboard that they track and follow. So using this tool, you can actually just quickly generate new stuff based on existing stuff, and then even go in and edit these individual items, change them a little bit more uh, to create new dashboards. So based on the type of user and how your users might want to experience this, we give you different options for that. But I also want to highlight, if I go back to the home, this is my solutions review, beautifully branded. There's another company called Acme Analytics. They have a similar experience, but a completely different brand. So you'll notice that their accent colors are different. Um, you know, believe it or not, they have the same employees. Uh, but this is the same application, but it's designed a little bit different. So if I go home to home, it has different fonts, different colors, but it's both an embedded experience. Let's look at another app that I built called the um, NG Comp Trader. So I did this for a conference last year. You can see it's just a standard line of business app. I've got a little chart icon here. When I click my chart icon, it jumps me right into a reveal dashboard. This is a reveal dashboard and it filtered out by that particular ticker on the homepage. So if I wanna look at CMC, now I'm, oh, I'm into UNH, I must've had that one selected. But now let's say I have the same kind of experience. I had all my dashboards listed. Let's go here, here's all of my dashboards. Um, let's take a look at the manufacturing dashboard. This is a dark theme dashboard. It's reveal. It's got uh, taken one of our dark themes and then customized it a little bit to match my uh, application theme. So again, this is just embedded. This is built in, not bolted on. And you can see that as I resize, the visualizations resize. And then eventually it goes down to a mobile view so it'll scroll up and down and you have the same features. So here I have the same features. I can swap out the visualization. I can go into edit mode. There are tabs now across the top instead of if I'm in full screen mode, I just have two tabs here. So again, complete control over the experience because this is an embedded SDK. And then finally, I have another example, a little bit more extreme. This is my... Uh, another website, you know how sometimes websites like only take up the middle of the screen? Well, here I've got my homepage, I've got my info, different screens here. I go to my reports. Oh, these are my dashboards. So again, the same exact dashboards that we're looking at here, this is using the same backend server, it's just displayed uh, in a different way. So same thing here, if I wanna link over to my orders analysis, it'll link over to orders analysis, uh, but very, uh, diverse in the types of experiences you can build because it's an embedded SDK. And I hope you kind of get that feeling like, hey, wait a minute, that really is embedded. There was no iframe there. It resized correctly because that's really what your customers are after. So with Reveal and App Builder, you can build these simple and beautiful user experiences. Uh, and they're not hard to build. You saw that solutions review demo in App Builder, I would say we got about 70% there in App Builder, which is the hard part, like the layout, making it responsive, understanding like, how do I get this SDK thing in there? How do I get my data bound? All of that was done for free. There was no code. I generated it. I added a little bit of code, maybe 20, 30% of code, maybe like 25%, I don't know. Uh, and then I had this entirely beautiful app experience. So you can really build out these next generation experiences with tooling like App Builder on the low code side and Reveal on the embedded SDK side. And you really can build these apps 10 times faster. We've done a lot of research. We've done a lot of user interviews, a lot of work with customers. And yeah, it's about 80% time savings when you're using something like App Builder to roll out uh, an application. And then when you look at Reveal, it's two years uh, quicker than if you were to build it yourself. We were just working with a customer 
And I still can't believe they're trying to build something themselves with some open source libraries because they never will. It'll never be that same experience that you can deliver with an SDK because by the time you're done building it, it's already out of date. And then you got to maintain and manage dependencies and all these other things for libraries that might no longer be supported uh, in the open source community. So with that, next steps, yes, please contact us, sales at infragistics.com. We are on standby globally uh, in all of those countries that we mentioned uh, in the first couple slides uh, to assist you in your digital transformation. So Doug, back to you. We kind of uh, put it right up against the line here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're uh, you're you're a killer at these uh, presentations. Um, what 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 struck what strikes me um, is is reveal. Uh, it, it feels a lot like. I mean, an, an app builder. I don't think could have come along at a at a better time. I mean, you guys seem to be just in front of kind of where the world is moving yeah. to, uh, which is very uh, clever for the, uh, for the product development folks. But, but it feels to me like um, it's the embedded analytics that is kind of the, yeah. the secret sauce and the game changer. I mean, is that what you see in terms yeah. of what people ultimately want out of an app? I mean, it's, it's not only the building, right? It's the, it's the efficiencies and the visualizations. Yeah, you can't beat doing a literally, you, you could get reveal, you could download our SDK and you could have it running in your app within two to three days. Like it's that easy to get going to, to completely transform your application. And that's what we're seeing is organizations are looking at this and saying, man, we've had this old reporting thing for 20 years or uh, they're their reporting tools no longer being supported or they don't update it anymore. It's not modern feeling. And yeah, in a few days, you can have a completely different app experience with embedded BI, self-service BI, and you don't have to make it self-service. I want to highlight that. You can make it like some people edit, no one edits, you just deliver dashboards. But to be able to deliver that in as short a time with that polish and that quality, uh, with basically any sort of data back end uh, is pretty remarkable. So we're seeing a lot of that. You know, Infragistics has been in business for over 30 years. We have hundreds of thousands of customers and this is where customers are really latching on and then finding new companies, startup companies that need this as a key part of their application that they want to deliver. So it runs the gamut on the types of folks that are uh, delivering this uh, type of solution. Well, and so... Let's talk about um, folks that are interested in having that conversation about App Builder and Reveal. What, what kind yeah. of support do you provide? I mean, how, do, how what, what can they expect in terms of um, you know the kind of the kind of insights that you're offering right now with regard to you know what how to get the most value out of out of a solution builder like this? Yeah, the cool thing is because we've been in business for over thirty years. Uh, just keep hammering that home, right? We're not new at this. We have customers that have thousands of licenses, and then we have thousands of customers that have one license. You know, so we've been in the tools business forever. Um, so we have all different tiers of support. We have enterprise support. So you know, you could have your own personal solution guy that can help you uh, drive this into your enterprise. Um, and then developers, what do they love? They don't want to talk to anyone on the phone. They love chat. They love things like Discord, uh, forums. We provide support at every level. And in fact, one of the neat things with both App Builder and Reveal, which has really taken off, is the fact that we provide real-time support on Discord. So Discord, you know, gamers use it. Microsoft uses it uh, to do support for their communities. So we started to use it, and uh, we haven't had any pushback. So people... They sign into Discord, they get an account, and they join our server, and they are literally talking to the product team in seconds, and we're solving problems, right? It's not like, oh, we're going to do this and then push you over to something else. We're literally solving your problem in an interactive chat uh, with customers. Uh, so yeah, every level of support that you need, if let's say you don't want to push something on Discord, you can use a private um, support ticket and then get support that way with our support team. We have support teams all over the globe um, in multiple languages. So 
uh, we are here to support you wherever you happen to be at. So are there any limitations with regard to on-prem uh, or in the cloud or private clouds? Uh, what, are the, what are the varieties available to folks if they have those limitations? Yep. Good question. So for App Builder specifically, we have every flavor. So, so by default, you're logging into a SaaS app that's hosted in AWS. Your organization may not allow that. Well, we have an on-prem version. You contact us. You get it in a Docker container, you do the deployment, it's completely on your premises. And now just rolling out in the second half of this year, we have an embedded version of App Builder where you may want to deliver low code as a feature to your customers in your apps. So that's going to be a game changer. Um, now for Reveal, because it's an SDK, it deploys anywhere. It deploys in your Amazon cloud, Azure cloud on-prem to your legacy Windows 2003 server, we don't care. As long as you can run a Node, Java, or .NET Core application, you can run Reveal anywhere in a container, in an API app. In fact, most of my samples I just deploy to an Azure API app. It's like one click uh, in Visual Studio and it deploys Reveal. Uh, and before you know it, I'm just using the cloud. It's that simple. How do people test? Right, I see you've yep. got a try app builder for free button, uh, book a demo button as you should. Yeah. Um, and as we would, by the way, we would encourage everybody to uh, reach out and, yes. and engage uh, and have a conversation about what you're thinking about because truth be told, there's just simply no better people to be talking to than the people who are building the apps. Um, yes. You shouldn't try to puzzle through this, uh, you know, at, yep. in, in, your, in your own silence. Uh, so how do people test? How does it, how does it work? Yep. So, yep, you can try both of these products on your own for free. Uh, they both have 30-day trials. Uh, usually with something like App Builder, you're going to make a decision within like three minutes of using it. You're going to be like, yeah, I need this. How can we get a license? Uh, and of course, you can just buy online, talk to your manager, buy 10 licenses, buy 20, whatever, because the value... Uh, is so clearly obvious. You're dragging and dropping and you're building a screen and it's like right there in front. Just what I did in my demo, it's like, wait a minute, it really just did this? And then you generate your Blazor code or your Angular code or your React code uh, and you're on your way. Uh, we do want to talk to you because a lot of times with something like App Builder, trying to understand what you're building, how you're building it, are you using tools like Figma or Sketch? How can we guide you to use it more efficiently? Uh, Reveal, again, you can download the trial and try it out. Reveal is a little bit different. It's a little bit more of a complex because you've got a server side, you've got a client side, there's data sources. Uh, so normally that goes through um, a little bit more hands-on. We do a call, then we do a technical demo, we talk to the developers, and then we have like a managed POC process. Lasts anywhere from two to four weeks. Uh, and the goal is to get you up and running as fast as possible with your primary success criteria. Uh, and then from there, you know, you're off to the races deploying it. So we've had customers that have went from downloading the SDK to deploying within three days. Uh, one of them just recently was a little under a week. Um, and then we have customers that are gonna do a really uh, structured pilot 30 days with us. They might take another 30 to 60 days to do more work on their side. But after the 30 day period, they know they're going with with the reveal as a solution. So there's a couple different approaches. The best thing to do in both cases is to contact sales. Uh, and very quickly, you're going to be talking to someone technical. It's not like, oh, I, I don't want to talk to a sales guy because I'm a developer or I'm a product manager. Um, so we, we will make sure that we get you into a technical discussion to make sure we're a good fit pretty quickly. Yeah, and I, I think my advice with regard to digital transformation is is seek small wins as you're moving through the yes. process. You have yes. to prove it out over time. It's not some, you know, multi-dimensional, yeah. pan-galactic, you know, all <laughs> or nothing play. <laughs> and, and, and that's what, you know, with reveal, what 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 folks do, they'll phase it out. They'll be like, okay, phase one, we're just gonna deploy some default dashboards. And then phase two, a year later, we're going to let people create their own or edit their own, you know, because this is cultural. Digital transformation is about the culture. It's not about the tech. 
And so that phased approach, like you said, don't go pan-galactic on day one or you're never going to get the success that you want. Yeah, no, and you, and you want to work with enthusiastic guys like Jason, and yes. uh, and we love talking to you, Jason. You always uh, bring thank you uh, the energy, mm-hmm. and uh, and we love that. Uh, this was great. Once again, mm-hmm. very much appreciated. Uh, strongly encourage everybody to go to infragistics.com and check out all that they're doing. I mean, this is just a small slice of some of the incredible things that they're doing. Um, Best of luck for the rest of the year. We're looking forward to talking again at some point soon. Yeah. Uh, but thanks again very much for the time today. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, everyone. So there you have it. Another solution in our spotlight. We want to thank Jason and Infragistics for that presentation, and we appreciate your participation as well. Till next time, I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review. Thanks for watching.